Electric vehicles are simply not working, at least according to legacy automakers. After the likes of Ford, GM, and Stellantis just reported their EV earnings for the third quarter of 2023, companies are witnessing a drastic slowdown in the sale as well as the inventory of electric cars that they've so pushed hard over the past three years. Top executives and CEOs are now saying that the investments they made in electric vehicles over the past three to four years with the rise of Tesla are simply not paying off after the pandemic boom demand for this new technology. As it turns out, the cyclicality of the nature of auto markets have simply put EVs at the forefront of losses for most dealerships, brokers, as well as OEMs. This is leading to EVs having a much higher turnaround time in most dealership lots, as well as having witnessed the largest amount of price cuts from not only dealers, but also OEMs themselves, like we've seen with Tesla. For example, Ford just cut the F-150 Lightning's price by a staggering 20% since its launch in May of 2021. And something like the Tesla Model X and S vehicles, which started north of $120,000, are now starting at around seventy-five dollars to $80,000. No matter how you put it, price cuts always happen for a reason, and they happen to stir demand at a time when demand is low. And that is exactly what you should be expecting when a monetary tightening policy is being thrown out across global economies to tame inflation and reduce supply chain bottlenecks. But the question is, if this kind of volatility in the auto market is something we can expect from electric vehicles, are they a sustainable path forward for global automotive giants, as clearly being voiced in their latest earnings report? EVs are cleaner, easier to maintain, and in many cases, a lot more comfortable for people to ride in because of their lack of noise or having to shift gears. But because of their inherent complexity with battery manufacturing as well as electrified power solutions, could there be some pros and cons of this revolution going into the next decade or so? And what exactly can legacy automakers do to reduce their dependence of internal combustion engines? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to try to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. First things first, folks, let's try to understand exactly what stirred the pot in the EV industry over the past two weeks or so. As you can see, the primary culprit are the executives of the likes of General Motors as well as Ford, who have pointed out in their earnings calls that they're not only investing later instead of now, but also facing issues with demand for their EVs, potentially signaling their investors that this might not be working out. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. Electric vehicles are still selling like hotcakes compared to what they were doing before the pandemic. But the reality is, with a 40% growth rate for the first half of 2023, compared to north of its 80% growth rate we witnessed in 2022, we are witnessing a very obvious slowdown. Now, on paper, this really shouldn't be that big of a surprise because the overall economy and the auto industry is also facing a similar slowdown. But like a lot of data has pointed out, EVs particularly are being plagued with a much worse resale value on top of them being relatively hard to move off of dealership lots. And although the skeptics can have their share opinion of why this might be happening with EVs potentially not being the best option, there's a few really obvious reasons why this is truly taking place. And that it has first and foremost to do with the idea that folks, most EV buyers are simply a niche market. 
people who are spending money on buying an electric vehicle are not financially burdened. If you're going to drop north of $50,000 on a new technology platform, chances are you can afford a vehicle like that and you can take on the issues of charging, taking on more time to fill up your vehicle, as well as even learning about how an electric vehicle works along with the higher costs of ownership and uncertainty involved with them. You have to replace tires more often. You might have to even take your vehicles into certified mechanics because obviously most people can't work on electric vehicles because of their much more uncertain nature. This means that most of the folks who were buying EVs throughout the pandemic and were flourished with cash are now holding on to their dear cash as they see better investment opportunities elsewhere, particularly given by the massive inflation we've seen since that time. And especially considering the fact that a lot of electric vehicle OEMs sell direct to consumer and skip the dealership, price volatility should be very much expected, meaning consumers can try to potentially front run reducing EV OEM costs and delay their purchases even further. And as for why these volatile prices even exist in the first place, Look no further than by analyzing the mineral content of an electric vehicle versus your traditional internal combustion one. Although ICE vehicles have much, much more components than an electric vehicle, the energy storage mechanism of an EV, which is its lithium ion battery pack, has an extremely diverse amount of minerals, including rare earth metals like your lithiums, your graphites, your manganese, as well as your cobalt. And as it turns out, this complex nature of making batteries also translates into other areas of manufacturing an electric vehicle from the ground up, which is something the likes of GM and Ford have been very vocal at pointing out. As a matter of fact, GM and Honda are canceling their $5 billion partnership to make new EVs from the ground up, as they simply see a much worse return on their investment and want to take the cautious route in the economic turmoil that we are witnessing right now. Again, similar to Ford's latest earnings report, this isn't a problem with the electric vehicle revolution or the decarbonization of the grid. This is essentially a problem of tightening monetary policy having an adverse effect on most EV buyers who are certainly still in the niche today. EV growth is slowing, but it is not turning negative. And most of the legacy automakers that are voicing their concern around this are simply doing this because they want to justify why their investments might not be working to their investors who we all know focus mostly on their internal combustion engine business. In my opinion, at least, the issue these companies are facing is not technology, innovation, or development. It's mostly just scale. It's about launching the right kinds of products that provide their own unique benefit to consumers, similar to the likes of Tesla with the Model S in 2012. Tesla took 10 years to make their EV business profitable, and you should expect a similar timeline for legacy OEMs, which is when economies of scale reach and turn a profit for these businesses. But as you know, folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Do you think this EV fad that many companies are mentioning is going to last many longer, or are we actually in the midst of a global revolution? Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.